Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting for July 30th, 2018. First, we have RSA 338A, issuance and bonds in excess of $100,000. Mr. Chairman, uh, there is a special town meeting which is in process. Um, deliberative session is next week on Monday. To, to uh, put brand new pipes in for the um, wastewater treatment plant uh, from the existing facility on Church Street uh, underground to the to the plant, in excess of four million dollars. Statute under RSA 338A requires that the board of selectmen hold a bond hearing uh, before the annual town meeting, the deliberative session. Uh, to discuss and, and re, or have people to come in and discuss and, and say how they feel about that that particular article. Okay, is there anybody here from the audience that wants to speak on the uh, issuance of the bond? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Anybody here? Please vote yes. <laughs> Seeing none, what do we need then, sir? Uh, you need to adjourn the hearing. Motion to adjourn the hearing. I like that motion. At. Is that time? At. 7.05. 7.05. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, now we have RSA 4114A first hearing. It's uh, Epping released, uh, it must be 15 Epping Ave. Release deed restriction number four, to gr the grantee will not erect any buildings upon the premises within seven feet of the boundary line, nor shall the premises be subdivided. All outbuildings and sheds other than stable or garages shall be connected within the attached to the dwelling house, stable, or garage on the lot. The petitioner's request is to the provision for the deed for the town which he seeks relief is requested in paragraph four, which restricts against the premises being subdivided, prohibits the erection of any buildings within seven feet of the boundary line. The lot would not be physically subdivided, but would change into a condominium form of ownership. The new building will have the same footprint as the existing building and would be farther from both the front and side boundary lines. Therefore, we are seeking release of the restriction against the subdivision, the release of the first building from the east from the seven foot setback and the second building on the rear, both sides, including the existing deck on the east side, a staircase on the west side. Good evening. Good evening, Peter. I represent the audience. Uh, so I'm here. Um, this went to the zoning board. There was a very poor condition house in the front before this, and the attempt at the zoning board was to rehab it. And it was eventually determined that rehab wouldn't work, it was just too far gone. So they decided to build a new house, set back. The zoning board wanted to set back quite a bit farther from the road than it was at the beginning of this. That's been done as far as you could to make the, the abutters happy, and they were happy when we were done. I'm going to hand out Because now you're crowding the building behind. But it allowed for a 
the uh, placement of a second, or I'm sorry, a sixth sparkling space. Uh, the setback on the front building is now the same as the back building, which is what the abutter wanted. Because we got rid of the steps uh, to the back building, we relocated them to the side. The abutter of that side was fine with that. So there are a few little things here and there, but basically, uh, felt this was an improvement over what was there before. I'm not going to get into the issue about the fact that that section of town has, by luck, restrictions of some properties and no restrictions of the other half of the properties there. It just amazes me that's still there. But, uh, this is a small request from this business person and I think it's all to the good. It's gone to the planning board for its recommendation. I assume we received it. Uh, and this is the first hearing. So I have to say, I open the questions. It's fairly straightforward. I thought the, the, the drawings and sketches would be a good idea what we're talking about. And just to be clear, this is before, this is after, or? Which, which comes first? I thought it was going to ask the, the after one is the top one. Okay. After one is the top one. So the bottom one is the before one. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? Yes. Mary Louise. Um, Peter, the this is like a double lot, if I'm reading it correctly. Is it no? No, no. What, what, um, hmm. What, what are the measurements for the whole parcel? 50 by? It's a standard 50 by 100 lot. 50 by 100, okay. Um, how about pervious surface? Is there a, a change for better or worse as far as the pervious surface goes? Did zoning attach, uh, look at that at all? Zoning looked at that. Uh, I can't remember the percentage, but as well within the well within the 60% limits, I think it is there. Because that's an issue all, all down there. The, that entire area, yeah. And people complain because when it rains, there's no place for the rain to soak in and they stay wet. That's the, the biggest problem I have doing work down there, this yep. impervious surface. And that's one of the first things I look at. Yeah. Okay. So zoning was, was comfortable with this? It was their recommendation, actually. To seek the release from the restriction. Okay. Thank you. Regina? I'm good, thank you. Jim? So, in effect, they're improving the, the lot. They're improving the lot. That's what I feel, and that's what the zoning board felt. Yeah, and they're moving it back, and they're moving it over a little. Yes, a little bit. Not much, but yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We couldn't move it any farther because the cars on that side would got to get out. Rick? So, is it bigger? It appears to be bigger. No, no same size. No. You have a little jog that isn't on the bottom one. Six? Yes, if you look at if you look at number the second sheet is a wrap around. Yeah. It's, a, it's the same same square footage. I just drew it differently. So just be clear, there's there's two buildings here now and there'll be two buildings when you finish. Correct. Okay. Any other questions from the board? With more parking. To, be a genius now, to fit. What do we need now? Parking on there. This is only the first hearing, yeah, right? Yeah, this is the first hearing. So we can. You're done, basically. We're There's done. no vote to take on this. Right, okay. So we'll close this hearing at 7 13 and we'll wait to hear for the second hearing. I'll be here. All right. <laughs> the second first hearing is 5 8th Street, de release deed restriction number three, no fences to be erected upon said premises other than ornamental fences of no more, or no more than three foot in height. The request for the exemption of 
a restriction in the deed from the town so that we make a higher fence than three feet high, but no higher than four feet tall on our property line. Four feet or six feet. So I think, well, I think originally it says six, six feet here. But yeah, originally when we filled out the application, we said three to six, not to go over the town ordinance of six feet, of, of course. But we, my name is uh, Charles Roy. Yeah. I go by Ted. Um, <laughs> we're building a new house down there on the beach, and um, what we'd ideally what we would like to do is be able to build a five foot fence there to, to provide us with some privacy and security in our around our home. Any questions yep. from the board? I have a problem with this one. What type of configuration are the fences in your neighbor's lots? I'm guessing they're three-foot fences, all of them? Uh, be directly behind us, there's a three-foot fence. Uh, to the east and west of us, there are no fences. No fences. No fences, yeah. Um, and I believe... I think that the, the one that is directly due south of us is the only one, and I think it's a three-foot fence. So not everybody in that neighborhood area, is, is it's not all fenced in? Correct. It, would this fence be a, a see-through fence, or would it be a wooden fence, or what? So it would be, you know, one of these white plastic fences that they're, you know, you see a lot, even on King's Highway. Um, okay. It would, it would at, the, at the street, it would have a, a lower level and then as it gets back into the property it would go up so that way it would allow us like I said the privacy from our neighbor which you know as you know the area it's very very you know tight down in that area okay yes so this would be constructed on two sides of you I mean you've got the street on one right side. So, so this would be the front and one side so this would be this would start on the easterly side of the house it would run the easterly side of the property to the back pin it would then cut across from east to west, mm -hmm. and then it would come back to the very edge of the back of the house. It does. It will not wrap around the entire house. Okay, okay. But there are there will, and I'm I'm trying to picture that fence. Are there little um, openings, I guess, for the for some air circulation to go through? Oh yeah, I mean there would be like a lattice type setup okay. at, the, at the very top, okay. but it wouldn't all be open like that. It would, right. you know, again, the idea for us is is to have some privacy. You want some privacy, but you want to have some air circulation. Correct. Everywhere. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're Jim. welcome. I have no questions at this time. Thank you. Jim. I have no questions at this time. Rick. And I have no questions. Is there anybody else from the public? That wants is there anybody else from the public that would like to speak on this? Seeing none, we will put it off till the next hearing because it okay. takes two and then we vote, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. So, third meeting is a vote. So, the next right. hearing is the next hearing will be two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. All right. We'll close this hearing at 7 16. Excellent. Announcements in community calendar. Well, first, we need public comment. Yeah, public comment first. Yes. Public comment. Anybody here from the public? <coughs> Mr. Preston. Right, Tell your brother sure. happy birthday today. 65, right? I know it. I'm <laughs> trying um, you, right? I wrote this down so I could try to make it quick. I wanted to do a little trash talking. Good. Um, you know, we're going to be going down this road again as things change. Personally, I'm tired of studies, consultants, committees. Of was recently in the, in the news for the same issue. Uh, Manager Welch formerly worked for Seabrook, where I believe recycling is voluntary, but the town compacts and bales and sells paper, cardboard, plastic, metal, and aluminum. Let's contact them for info. When Manager Welch came on board, we met in April in his office, and I said, get ready for the cardboard invasion at the beach. Starts in May and goes through September. I was trying to get us to think outside the box to get cardboard handled differently. You used to have to cut it up in 18 inch squares by one inch, one foot bundles. I was trying to get it recycled while handling it less. I spent a year on the recycling committee trying again to think outside the box. While I met some nice people, I considered my time was wasted. I would like to hear from the town manager, his assistant, the DPW director, and his deputy, even if they have different opinions. Just as important, I would like to hear from the business owners as to how they could reduce tipping fees. 
as it does up and down the weight. Could we start with cardboard and glass? How about getting as much as possible out of the waste stream? I believe I heard the DPW director, you know, within the last year or two say that hydraulic seals were getting blown out on some of our equipment from the weight of the glass. Mm -hmm. let's, let, let's get glass off the beach and make it safer and save money at the same time. Personally, as a resident taxpayer, I'm tired of hearing how much businesses deserve, deserve unlimited trash for the taxes they pay. If anybody wants to sit down at your place, my place, or in this room and compare, compare tax bills, I'll gladly do it. Let's work together and reduce tipping fees and save dollars for all of us, whether you're residential or commercial. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else from the public would like to speak? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise? Yes. Um, the Hampton Fire Department received two very nice letters from two public citizens who had been assisted by members of the fire department. It is very kind of the uh, members of the public to acknowledge the service of the men and women in our fire department. It does give you a nice uh, community feeling and I was very pleased to read those letters. Yeah, I have one thing. I want to. There was some confusion. I think it was last week, Mr. Chairman. I emailed you because people couldn't find some of the meetings on Channel 22. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to thank Channel 22 because, well, they immediately responded to Rusty and he relayed the message to me. And then also they put it up on social media pretty quick and they also put it right up on the town website. So if anyone is still having problems finding the meetings, I think it was after July 1st. Right, right. There, so you got to just scroll all the way down and then it will tell you the meetings before July 1 and the meetings after July 1. And as far as we know, everything is there and you should be able to find it. So I just want to thank Channel 22. And just in regards to what Mr. Preston just said, also I know the town or well, Public Works sent out some letters because there was some request for additional bins yeah. in regards to trash. And they were both commercial and residential requests. And if the town manager, we did not, we denied those requests, correct? Because all That's the bins right. that we have that are to be issued have been issued and we will not be issuing any more at this time unless there it's a new new building new building correct right. all right thank you yeah, that's <laughs> um yes i just wanted to say that i did talk to uh the lady i don't know i didn't see it her letters here that's husband was on a um, scooter and he went over um the uh he was on a platform just before the stairs and then he went on his scooter down the stairs and the lady who's an older woman she managed to keep his head from hitting the ground and uh, but it's amazing he wasn't hurt and you know he's got a lot of issues and um, a lot of people came to help uh, that were around there and one of them called um, the fire department and the ambulance service showed up very quickly and <clears throat> they were able to take the man back to his house and get him settled because he lived across the street and um, they were just amazed how nice it was and they live in the Boston area and uh, they were they just were just filled with com compliments on how this was a wonderful thing um, and how they were treated by the ambulance service and the paramedics um, the other thing I'd like to mention, because it did happen um, at the meetings about the flood control, you know, the flooding at the beach and this and that, <clears throat> the people from Gentian Road and Green Road and that, they were there, and they're very concerned about um, uh, the, um, the $100,000 thing. Uh, the Warren article, and I did see that there's a letter in here saying that they are interviewing uh, two people, two groups that might be uh, dealing with this study, and um, I also talked to Mr. Welch, and he says it's not going to be that 
you know, we have so many things going on right now. Everyone's working really hard. So I want to let those people know in that area that we are working on it and it hasn't been forgotten. Thank you. Jim. Yeah, I want to piggyback on the Channel 22 thing. <clears throat> I hope people have realized and when they're watching on the computer or watching on TV that the it's improved tremendously. The volume has improved, the audio, the visual and everything. And that Rick Cantor, I think that's his last name. Yeah, is that, Cantor. Yes, yes. Yeah. Who was the employee sort of piggybacked on getting that whole bid together and, and when they put it together he was here working on it. And But I also want to say that Brian McCain, who's been the chairman of the cable mm -hmm. committee for a long time now, is the one that pushed this through and the cable committee really did a good job of getting it done and making sure that we stayed on task with it. So I want to thank all those people that did that. So Channel 22 has done a great job. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look around this room here, you can see some of the, the upgrades yeah. that we already have right. with, the, with the bigger TVs, the TV that makes it easier for us to see when people come in and, and make presentations and they're on a computer yeah. now. We have a big screen right in front of us, which is perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, we just got to get people to start using that. <laughs> but we have a uh, uh, a lot has gone into it. But I I, uh, I agree with Jim that you know, kudos goes to Brian and all the all the people that work out back. That you never see them, but they're always here and they're doing an excellent job. I I have two quick items that I forgot. We've got so much stuff and paperwork that I'm thinking. the um uh, I had a call last week from residents who went out for a walk uh, on the north end of 1A and found residents out there with shovels and they couldn't figure out what the folks were shoveling until they got down by 18th Street with handicap ramp and it was all covered with sand and the nice neighbors were out there shoveling but I am very disappointed in the state's um, I don't know, response at the beach this year. And one other thing, uh, ladies and gentlemen will probably notice, because I noticed on my way in tonight, um, the hydrants are being color-coded for the convenience of the fire department, so the firefighters know what uh, amount of water or pressure uh, is in the hydrants when they respond to you. And this has been a sore point and has been mentioned to Aquarian, and I'm very happy you will see, um, I hope, a lot of blue paint uh, or green paint on the hydrants to identify the water power. Well, the only way it'll be blue or green is the size of the main in the street. That's all that tells you. Yeah, well. So, uh, and, and you're right. I want to thank those people that went out and shoveled off that, yeah. that ramp. That was very nice of them. It's good to see citizens out there doing it. The, the, mm -hmm. You know, you, the, the old saying goes, see something, say something, mm -hmm. but also is see something, do something. And I think that's very commendable to those citizens that went up and did that. Yeah. So, approval of the minutes, July 16th, public session. That. Motion, second. second. All those in favor? Uh, those are the regular minutes. Regular right? minutes. Because I had one correction in there. It, in the first, now those are the regular minutes, not the non-public. Those are the um, regular minutes. On the, I think it's page two, it's talking about the um, amount of money that the uh, experienced Hampton people had to raise. I think it says 1.5 million in there, but it should say 2.8 million. I'll just correct the dollar amount. I, I misunderstood when I first uh, talked with Fred. <clears throat> but it should be 2.8 million. Okay. Anything else? No. All those in favor? Unanimous as amended. Also, you have same yeah. Also move for the July 16th non-public minutes. Alrighty. All those in favor? Oh, so, somebody got a second it. Rick will second it. All those in favor? Aye. And abstain. Four, one abstention. Very good. Consent agenda. We have the Hampton Cemetery deed. We have a banner and sign license. We have Harkers and Pedals license. We have a management agreement. We have parade and public gathering licenses. We have a petition for underground gas line. We have a pool, per, pool table permit. We have a recreation advisory council appointments. And I'll J.D. Searle, Duffy Sink, and we have a sidewalk vendors, uh, seafood sidewalk vendors license. 
I'll make the motion to move the consent agenda. I'll second. I'll I have a question yep. on it. Hawkers, peddlers, vendors, licenses for what? Hawkers, peddlers. Is, it, is that for the uh, renewal by Anderson? For, for what? It says for renewal by Anderson. It says Cohen, yes. Glank, and Harrington. I, I, do you know what these are for? For what function? I just couldn't figure that one out. Wait a second. Yeah. And management agreement 230 Exeter Road. What kind of management agreement? The rest is okay, but I have questions on those two. I can't tell whether that's the management agreement has something to do with the gas line. No, management nope. agreement is the agreement oh. of the, the 230 Exeter Road. That's right. Speaks conservation land that was acquired. Oh, okay. Right, right. Okay. You know, the Conservation Commission will be um, the maintaining that property. They'll be keeping an eye on it and making sure that it's correct. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Hawkers, Penda, uh, Peddlers, and Vendors uh, license. Uh, the first one is to uh, Cohen. Uh, which is uh, his address is in Crosstown, uh, New Hampshire. Uh, you'll be driving a white Ford Transit uh, with certain lettering, um, and he's going to be conducting an operation to go from place to place in order to sell goods. Looks like a bunch of those are for uh, with the bunch with the, the last person's name are uh, they're they're going to be doing. Win, it looks like windows, window yes. replacement. Yep. So they're going to be going around. Yeah, that's why I thought we know by Anderson. Right? Right. I okay. thought it was yep. the seafood festival or something. No. I couldn't no. figure out what it no, was. No, it's it's going driving around. It's like window replacement. In order, in order to go from house to house, they have to have a vendor. So they're soliciting windows. business. Windows, yes. Windows. They go around the town. Windows. Replacement windows. Okay, as long as we know what we're doing. Thank you. Okay, so okay. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Appointments. Tim O'Connor, Chairman of the Mosquito Control Commission. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Tim O'Connor, I'm Chairman of the Mosquito Control Commission. Yep. This is Rich Rainier, one of the Commission members. Mm -hmm. We're here before the Board to, to seek waivers on, uh, on our upcoming three-year RFP, or actually we, the RFP already is already in, and there's three sections in the, in the uh, purchasing manual that we need waivers for in order to uh, properly award the contract. So the first waiver we, we need is from for policy 718-3-A, that states that we should go, when we go out for bid, we should go out to these three vendors. There's only two vendors in the uh, in the coastal community here that does that do mosquito control at the at the town level. We quoted both of those, and uh, but in addition, we also put the quote up on, onto the website for anybody that that wanted to, and nobody else responded. So we seek a waiver. Uh, your uh, your approval of that waiver. Uh, do you want me to go through all three of them? Yeah, I might as well go. Okay. Uh, we also seek a waiver for 718-4 to award award the uh, the bid to the to the person that, that isn't the highest bidder. Uh, we want to award the uh, contract to our, our incumbent contractor. They've serviced the, the town of Hampton for the last uh, 14 years since 2004. Mm -hmm. The incumbent contractor has proposed a uh, fixed cost three year contract that is 2.5% lower than the current contract. And that, that enables the HM, HMCCs to stay within the current budget for the next three years. Uh, Rich would like to comment uh, about the incoming contractor uh, record and timely filings. Every month we get, uh, the, the name of the company that we do business with is Dragon Mosquito Control. Yeah. Uh, every month we get a very precise and, and comprehensive report from them. And just very briefly, I'd like to read our June report, just for the benefit of the public, for uh, just a few facts. June arrived and for the first part stayed dry and warm until last week. Temperatures in the 90s in the West Nile virus have been isolated in mosquitoes in Massachusetts, increased concerns for WNV here in New Hampshire. 
Hot and dry summer weather is the primary condition, <clears throat> leading to an increase of WNV. The Northern House mosquito is the primary vector for West Nile virus in New Hampshire. While the mosquitoes can develop in a variety of freshwater habitats, they are highly attracted to catch basins known for polluted water. Mm -hmm. Catch basin's subterranean design retains water and produces abundant mosquitoes during the summer. Most of the southern New Hampshire received two inches of rain at the end of June, filling up low-lying areas and containers. In addition to treating catch basins, crews are checking salt marshes and freshwater sites. And in our report, uh, it is like six pages that we received from Dragon Mosquito wow. showing their activity mm -hmm. all through the town, date by date, the lava siding, the surveying, and whatever uh, functions they are providing for us. And it, 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 again, it's very thorough. Uh, and, and just just add, we can. It's detailed enough that we can we can reconcile the. Uh, the monthly invoice right to the activity that do, they're doing. So Excellent. that's, we think that's important. Another point too, greenhead flies emerge for the first week of July in New England mm. and stay around for the first part of summer. You can set your clock by them. If you have experienced their bite, you know that they are truly dumb, a, a torment of biting flies. <laughs> so June is the month we ensure the new trap construction is done and all traps are repaired and all are in place and the salt marsh is ready to catch as many greenhead flies as possible. Passing by the salt marshes, you can see the traps lined up as a barrier between you and the greenheads. We have a hundred, Dragons puts out 182 traps throughout the Hampton area. And you know, if you look at them from a distance, they look pretty small. But these traps are at least three feet, a three, a three foot box. You could stand about six feet high mm -hmm. with the stakes that hold them into the marsh. So it's a very a labor intensive project for the employees of Dragon to be sloshing out to the marsh and putting those traps out mm -hmm. and bringing them back after the season. So again, 182 traps are out there. Right. And again, Dragon does an excellent job of uh, providing the services to the town. Yeah. So we are urging you to allow us to go ahead with this proposal. Thank you. And, 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 question. Oh. And one, one, one last point. Uh, Dragon also also does Seabrook, Hampton, Northampton, and has recently won, won bids uh, to do Rye and Portsmouth. So that's kind of a testament to the quality of their work. We also need, need an ex, uh, waiver for policy 718-5-1 uh, policy that states that when we award, award a, uh, a bid, it's in the best interest of the town. And I think some of the stuff Rich, Rich just said, said can be, uh, again, used to be used as a, as a testament. They've proven over the pre previous contracts that they can deliver the, the contracted services, stay within budget, and respond to the, the one-off special request in, in a timely manner. Uh, speaking of greenhead fly traps, <clears throat> when the when the people were working on the uh, on the sewer project, they certainly stirred up a lot of greenheads. Uh, they asked Dragon for more traps. They responded within within 24 hours more, wow. with more traps to help them out. And finally, they require minimal day-to-day -day direction from the HMCC, which is very important because uh, I don't know. I couldn't tell whether they're doing a good good job or a bad job if I had to supervise <laughs> somebody other than Dragon. So. Those are the three three wa waivers we, we request in order to uh, award the contract. Any questions from the board? No, I, I have a motion if there well, are no say, questions. Any questions first? I, th I think Dragon does a super job. Yep. I think you guys do a super job. You know, it's something that people don't pay a lot of attention to. But boy, it's important to keep the mosquitoes under control and the green head flies. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Especially. Now, if we could only do something about the noceums, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say, yeah, I agree with what I'm ready to make the motion for whatever you guys need. I think Dragon does a great job. and. When I hear the bug truck coming, I'm always happy <laughs> the bug because truck. <laughs> that means it's less we'll have to deal with the next day. So, great job. Thank you. Ms. Mary Louise, you want to make motion? Yes, I'm prepared to move that we authorize the request of the Mosquito Control Commission uh, as stipulated in item 1 uh, a, a and then uh, Roman 1, 2, and 3 for their uh, mosquito control services for the years 2019, 2020, and 2021. Second. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? 
It's unanimous. Okay, thank you very much. Thank the you, the other thing that's out there is the uh, the birdhouses that are out on the marsh that, that you see out there. That mm -hmm. Dave Weber. I don't know if yeah. you guys know Dave Weber yeah. or not, but Dave's Dave's built every one of those houses that's out there just about. Yeah. And there's got to be. Uh, he puts out sixty or eighty a year. Yeah. And he loses them over the year, and he'll he builds sixty or eighty more each year and puts <laughs> them out there. The no, nope, the, these are the bird. The, the blue ones are the, are the greenhead, uh, greenhead traps. Greenhead. But these are the birdhouses, and he puts them out for swallows, and he's yeah. And he does it all himself, and it's just a good little project that he does. But yeah. does, but I want to make sure that he gets noted, recognized for doing those birdhouses. Good. No taken. Nice job, Thank gentlemen. You. Thank you. Thank you. The next one is Chris Jacobs, DPW uh -huh. Director, and Jen Hale, Deputy Director. Good well, first talk about waste management and recycling. This particular topic uh, Reminds me of a song uh, uh -oh. that who does it. You know, also the major part of it is the times they are changing. <laughs> and it seems that in the waste management, in the whole waste industry, the times are changing and, yep. and changing rapidly. Um, I do have a, uh, a copy of a memoir. Pass those around. Thank you, sir. so fast and um, I've been on the phone uh, with a number of people over the last two weeks um, that what I'm bringing forward to you tonight is really just uh, uh, somewhat of a summation, um, some major points, some suggested recommendations. Um, it's going to require um, that we visit with this topic, I would suggest uh, a couple of times over the fall. Uh, particularly as we go into the budget season because what's happening is potentially going to uh, impact our budget. Uh, so let me start. Um, first thing to point out for those of us here and those of us home, um, the level of contamination um, that uh, a number of foreign governments buy these materials that we produce uh, from um, recycled paper, recycled cardboard, plastics. I'll give you, for instance, uh, FOSS Manufacturing buys uh, recycled uh, soda bottles. If you go in there, they've got yep. Gaylords full of this, and it's chipped or pelletized material, and they, they're making cloth out of it uh, for the automotive industry. So it, it, it has a, a really good, uh, some of these products have a really good reuse. Um, earlier this year, um, Waste management was notified, and in turn, they notified us that a number of these foreign markets, particularly China, had lowered the amount of allowable contamination from 5% down to 0.3 of a percent. Not 3%, but 0.3 of a percent. To give you uh, a comparison, if you had um, 100 pounds of compressed, let's say, milk bottles, and somehow um, four pounds of glass, cardboard, tin cans, something else that wasn't supposed to be in that that particular uh, segregated waste stream is in there, then they say that the whole load for that particular product is contaminated. Um, we've been notified by waste management that our particular contamination level is at 25 percent. But pursuant to their contract, um, they have not um, told us so far what those actual contaminants are. Um, for instance, if you someone decided, hey, I don't need this hose anymore, I'm going to put it in the recycling um, bin, uh, it's rubber, they can probably recycle it, come to find out, no, they can't recycle that. And it's products like that and the plastic bags that we get from uh, the major shopping centers, um, those that's listed as a contaminant. So if people think that, okay, I'm doing a good job by putting all my clean paper in one of those bags and then putting that in the recycling, they don't want it. Those bags fly around, get caught up in the machinery, and uh, a lot of times shut the plants down 
uh, for extended periods of time. So waste management has notified us that if the, starting tomorrow, or starting, sorry, Wednesday morning, that uh, loads in excess of the 5% allowance, they're going to start charging us $225 a ton for the load. And if and they don't actually test each load. So if one out of five trucks is contaminated, one of the five loads, that's 20%. They're going to charge us basically for 20% of all of our recycling going forward. So we're going to go instantly from $0 to $225 a ton. Um, that equates, if you look at what we threw away last year for recycling, and we threw away 2,771 tons, that equates next year to a $124,000 increase in our um, recycling disposal costs. The other part of the market that's changing is construction and demolition waste. In the past, we were only paying $48 a ton. We were notified uh, when we solicited, uh, hey, you need us to give us a new contract with Triano. That went from 48 to 85 a ton, and they also increased their uh, hauling costs from $300 a load to $450 a load. That was a very short notice. Um, I've asked the guys to, uh, guys, men and women that are at the transfer station to divert some of the contaminated C and D waste, meaning sheetrock, uh, insulation, things of that nature, away from the C and D construction and demolition, and put it to send it right off to uh, the landfill. Um, that particular increase of the tipping and the um, transportation alone would add up to a, just a, under, over a $52,000 increase uh, in next year's budget. So these, these things that we're dealing with that, are, that have developed in the last six weeks have some um, real impacts to um, our ability to uh, serve the public and also what would trickle down to the tax rate. And uh, always very considerate of uh, what that impact is because um, we're always trying to get the better value or the best value we can for the tax dollars that um, the residents entrust us within the government to expend for them. Uh, so the things that I'd like to uh, bring forward or ask for your permission uh, would be to grant myself uh, and the deputy director and our staff to um, deal with uh, some of the mandatory recycling that we collect um, for the, I would say, the next 60, 90 days. Uh, we're, we want to divert some of this to the, uh, right into the trash uh, trailer. So if, for instance, if we have a, um, one of the more, um, it's not common, but it did occur, uh, the guys noticed, uh, was either during the weekend or yesterday, probably just during the weekend, they went and emptied a recycling container and on the side of the road. It gets into the truck, all the recycling was being dumped into the to the hopper. Right smack in the center of it was a um, microwave oven with the $10 uh -huh. disposable fee taped right to the top. And on it went to waste management because nobody wanted to put their life at risk uh, the cuts that they'd suffer from dealing with glass and things yeah. of that nature. So that went in the trailer. But those are some of the things that are happening in the recycling market. Um, recycling is easy, but it's just not that easy. That's that's an item that should have been brought to the transfer station uh, for processing. But um, we are seeing loads from various areas where um, it's obvious that uh, the recycling's been totally contaminated with trash. Uh, no, no reasonable person would take the time to sort it. Or we're seeing uh, trash that's reasonably uh, or unreasonably uh, contaminated with recycling. Uh, because we're going to have to start paying 225 a ton for recycling and only 62 or 64 dollars for uh, for waste, uh, we'd rather just in the short term send it right off to the landfill if it's totally contaminating um, our waste stream. Uh, my second point is I'd like to work more with waste management to determine what they feel constitutes contamination. Um, we have uh, asked to have a meeting with them or to do 
some of the audits that they promised. They promised about seven or eight audits. Um, they finally got back to us with an invite, and it's tomorrow morning. Uh, so the one day before the $225 fees increased. I have asked them to uh, postpone that fee penalty clause out another 30 days. Um, the response this afternoon was, well, show up tomorrow and we'll discuss it. Mm -hmm. I don't have the authority to discuss that with, with them. Um, that's a contractual matter. Um, probably the tipping floor in Bill Rick is not the place for me to be discussing that with them. Um, but I would like to work with waste management um, day in and day out to determine what sort of things they're seeing in the recyclables, um, which they say is constitutes contamination. Um, as I said, my third point would be to uh, see, I would like to uh, cease the collection of uh, recyclables that overload the carts. Um, pursuant to the collective bargaining agreements that we've signed with our labor unions, uh, it limits the weight uh, in these carts to 75 pounds. It was done, I believe, initially so that when people were trying to lift them up to, to get them attached to the cart flippers, uh, that people didn't fill them with wet newspaper, crushed glass, mm -hmm. uh, seaweed, uh, yard waste, things of that nature, uh, sand, if they were sweeping beach sand off, things that would well and exceed the capacity of the c containers. What we're seeing is we've got a number of carts out there where uh, they are being overloaded and they're actually splitting in the sides. Um, so I would like to uh, just basically stick with the union agreement with your uh, agreement and that is to uh, stop collecting carts in excess of 75 pounds. I know there's a number of businesses down at the beach area um, that that's going to prove problematic to them because they've been, um, they're limited for space reasons with how many carts that they can have, particularly I'm thinking of one restaurant but remain nameless. Um, so one way to get around that is just crush the glass inside the cart and then um, you can get more in there. But um, what it's having an effect on is we replace two or three cart flippers per year. And what goes on them is the gaskets and the actual joints. They actually wear out. And it's not because, um, you know, they could flip thousands of carts per year, but they're flipping carts that, well ex that exceed the capacity of the flipper of the technology and they, the flipper, a new one costs us about 3500 We rebuild two or three each year at about $2,500 and we always have to keep one in stock because um, yeah. when a truck goes down and the flipper goes down, we basically unbolt the old one and put the new, newer one or the rebuilt one on. So overloading these containers is having an effect on the wear and tear of the equipment. Uh, we're also thinking that it's one of the things that uh, stresses the hydraulics and then when we get a sidearm truck that blows a hose, um, it isn't so much that it's old, it's just that it's being strained. Because when it pulls it in and then tries to tip it up, that's when the, when the heartache um, happens. Uh, the other thing I'd like to do, with your permission, is seek other options for the recycling and the C and D waste. I have had conversations with uh, the former uh, business that we dealt with up in Portland, Maine, that we had a zero uh, dollar per fee uh, with them. Um, they're, they do enough business that they'd like to have the volume that we have. Mm -hmm. Um, their contamination rate schedule is, um, it's a sliding. Maximum, I think, was 75 a ton, but it's only for the ton that's actually contaminated, not the whole truck. What does CND mean? CND means construction and demolition waste. It's um, short. The, the uh, other thing with the CND, because the transportation's gone way up, uh, there's a company 15 minutes up the road on Route 101 would take all the C&D that we generate. So where do you get the C&D that's brought to the transfer center? Pallets, uh, scrap 2 by 4s from house building, renovations, construction, things of that. Uh, no, we 
don't pick it up. It's brought to us all by um, yeah. um, trucked in individuals, contractors, yeah. and we do charge them for that uh, at, the, at, the, at the standard going rate. Um, the fifth thing I'd like to do is to look into at least the cost of uh, transporting our own recycling and waste streams to these other sites. Um, at $450 a haul, $300 a haul to go down to Bill Ricca um, and, and, and going up, it's just getting more and more advantageous that we ought to at least look at yep. the cost of either leasing or purchasing a long haul truck. We have our own trailers. We would need a few more trailers. Yeah. Um, I floated the idea of uh, a driver to a past employee who has a CDL A license. Yeah. He said he'd love to. Um, I floated the idea to our current drivers to have CDL B licenses. They'd love to get an A license and start doing this. So it's not. Um, it's it's something we should look at. I don't think we I, we should just say that we shouldn't look at it at all because a big portion of what we pay uh, for to get rid of these materials is in the transportation area. Uh, the sixth thing I'd like to ask your permission to, to look at is uh, increasing our recycling mm -hmm. education. Um, that specifically we probably look at contracting with a recycling educator that we develop some educational videos for channel 22 maybe some YouTube videos on our own uh, YouTube page, uh, trifolds, and, and other things. Um, the old days of just handing out a paper saying this is what's recyclable and then it's not around anymore, 30 days out, 50 days out, um, we, we've got to be a little more um, modern in how we get the message out there. Um, and the seventh thing I'd like to ask your permission to do or your find out how you feel about it is to look at the rate that we charge. We have a price sheet out there for things that we do charge at the, the transfer station. Um, if these markets are going to fluctuate like this, mm -hmm. I think it's prudent that we at least look at that. Um, I'm not saying to up the fees, but maybe there's certain things, for instance, that we currently don't charge for that we should charge for because in the end they're costing us a lot of money. Um, in summary, um, all these uh, potential expenses add up to $177,000 and I'd like to uh, work with you to avert that potential cost increase before we get right into the heavy part of the budget season. That's all for me. Go ahead, Mary Louise. Very timely and I appreciate what you've brought in. I have some questions. Uh, Regina and I spent a couple of hours with Fred Friday morning. Um, it's obvious that uh, there is probably a, a, a national emergency as far as waste is concerned. We're going to reach a point where we're drowning in waste. They had a uh, terrible clip on TV a couple of days ago. I think it was Nicaragua or one of those countries. And uh, it's Dominican Republic. It's the Dominican Republic. And they had a nice beach covered, covered with trash, and as far out in the ocean as you can see. So if anybody wants to take a they vacation. Had there when they did get it picked up by the waste management people. Is that what <laughs> it was? That's how it got there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's depressing. It up by but I have several people. thoughts for you. Blue Number blue. one, on the um, carts that are being overloaded. I'm assuming that the gentlemen who are um, manning the vehicles and rolling the carts over to the lifting mechanism, that they can tell pretty much by when they start to move it, right. if it's too heavy. Can we simply tell the um, public works employees to simply not try to attach that to the truck? Yes, I mean, we've been through this before where uh, when we've had non-compliant um, mm -hmm. residences or businesses or whatever in the past, uh, basically we stickered the cart and That's we didn't pick it up, and say. in the past Frank would go by or uh, whoever was the supervisor would go by to those individual residents yep. and explain to them why we don't pick this up. 
in yes. most cases it was like it was overflowing out of the top or yeah. that there was uh, two bags of trash on top of the recycling because the trash was already full right. there was so there is a way I mean it isn't like we just walk away no there, there, there has to be an education and uh, component along with what we do right that's good uh, Fred was talking to us a little bit about glass is there any way we can segregate glass and Fred was talking about it in terms of then grinding it down grinding leftover waste glass uh, that can, and can be used as a component in a road uh, you know in paving it no it definitely can um, I don't know if there's some way, especially at the right beach. Right now, when we're single stream recycling, yeah. there isn't a way. Yeah. Um, we'd have to say that we'd have to go to three stream yeah. waste, co-mingled recyclables, and glass. Because mm -hmm. the glass is heavy, right? and it does have a good useful purpose. It does, and it can be mixed with, um, I know a number of communities do it. Uh, Wakefield was one of them that they... Uh, they uh, take the glass and, and screen it and, and mix it with their um, road binder material that they eventually put down on the roads. Mm -hmm. So there is, a, there is a possible reuse for it. Um, it does change how we would um, literally accept glass and then manage it or handle it after that. Mm -hmm. um, we'd have to put it into a separate roll-off container yeah. or a separate pile out in the yard where we eventually mm -hmm. go out and crush it right. with a roller. Um, I, to ask your item six, uh, looking at increasing recycling education and so forth, I'm sure uh, SAU 90 and probably SAU 21 would be very happy mm -hmm. to cooperate with you because that's uh, a good entry level. Sometimes adults don't pay much attention, but the kids uh, tend to be a little more enthusiastic about helping with things like recycling. I think that would be great. Uh, you have a terrible burden on you right now. I, I am really, I'm really concerned about public works. You have, uh, you have a huge amount on your shoulders, and it is changing so fast. Uh, another thing I would uh, suggest, and maybe you can put it if you put notices, whoops, on the uh, cable and so forth. Um, since my daughter died, I'm alone, and I find that I try to recycle very very uh, well very well but I find that I'm only filling up about half of my container now it costs you time and money for your men picking these things up I only put my green card out every other week and I'm not putting really heavy stuff in there but if you can avoid having the town truck for recycling stop at your house and dump out half a cart you know just put it out every other week and you're saving trips exactly. and if you're doing that all over this town hopefully it will save you money and by the way thank you for rescuing the residents uh, last week they were very impressed to see you <laughs> come to the neighborhood to help um, let's see I've got a I think I read something that Fred put together talking about having about 15,000 carts out there. Yeah, we started with 10. When I we know that in 2008. We are about 15,000 carts. We, we can't keep doing this. We're going to have to start, and I'm, I'm not sure how, we're going to have to start being more discriminating on, on the carts um, if people... Um, damage their cart I, or uh, if somebody just steals the carts so we, we have a big problem with all this stuff we need to look for a better way I think to manage these and and possibly limit now we have pictures tonight in in the material that was given us of a development that's going up on 315 Ocean Boulevard and they're going to be businesses on the bottom floor. And we're when we reach a point where we've got, what? I had one lady call me one day. She said she was at the beach, and she drove by X business, and there were 26 carts out in front of the business. We're going to have to find a better way. We can't keep doing this. So I will be looking for any suggestions 
um, from you. Um, I think we should have stayed with EcoMaine. Uh, I didn't vote to go with the other <coughs> company when this came up in 2015. And uh, we sure, certainly should be exploring all options. I frankly was getting ready to ask for a whole evening uh, meeting with both of you to sit down and discuss trash only. I think it's a terrible problem for this community and a huge challenge. So bless your heart, and I know you're doing the best you can, but the public better wake up and understand this is not funny, and it's going to cost a lot of money if we don't get it right. Regina? Yeah, I think this memo that you prepared is good. Yep. I agree with all seven. Uh, all seven yep. suggestions. To look at the rate schedule, number seven, we charge at the transfer station for all materials with consideration to fee adjustments in keeping with market trends. I mean, this is what we have to do. New businesses coming here? Okay, fine. But guess what? We got a trash issue going on. So as far as I'm concerned, we don't give any new bins out Good. until we figure out how to take care of the people that we're already trying to take care of. Yep because $177,000 to add to a budget that's a default budget for trash is uh, huge. I don't quite understand how waste management can get away with, if we have an existing contract, Fred, it's five year contract we have with waste management, right? Mm -hmm. And is there anything in there that says that they can go from zero to $225 a ton at any given time? No. no. So what's happening over at Waste Management is they have to deal with issues that's going on mm -hmm. nationwide, worldwide, and they're trying to pawn, pawn, pawn their additional costs off on the mm -hmm. taxpayer. So, and that's just what it is. I mean, if Eco's not going to do that, then maybe we should find that out. I think that, you know, figuring out what exactly is going on over at Waste Management, like Chris wants to do, is a good <laughs> idea. Yeah. But I think, yeah, if you guys need to cease recycling or whatever you decide is the best thing to save the money, I think we definitely have to do that. Yep. Because, I mean, recycling is a good idea, but not if it's going to cost us that much money, in my view. They did add to um, to the contract that we signed. It was under this uh, Exhibit C. Uh, it only says, basically, that um, and any costs associated with the removal of non-recyclables in excess of 5% by weight for each delivered load in any excluded material should be invoiced separately. But yeah, it never says that... 225% uh, increase? No, never does. It just no. says excluded materials like biomedical, explosives, um, regulated medical waste or hazardous waste, things that we're normally used to not putting in, but it never gave a rate. And I think if there's a way that it could be worked out, that we could somehow in the future separate glass and maybe keep it here and use it as Fred suggests, I think it's really a proactive yeah. move on our part. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's not something that can be figured out right now. But as far as this concerns, if the board agrees with what you came up with, I think this also explains for the public mm -hmm. why public works why we're doing what we're doing is yes. doing what they're doing why they're probably going to see some changes i mean i can already tell you i went down the transfer station this morning and i mean you actually have to wait there now because you know people cars are actually stopping and doing what they're supposed to do yep. so i mean everyone's going to see changes but if they know why hopefully it won't cause such a yeah it, none of this know, is being done um indiscriminately or without I mean mm -hmm. like you said uh, Mary Lisa I have enough to do right. I don't really oh, need oh, this yes. is right. another exactly. issue yes. so, but mm -hmm. it is an issue that I do have to face we have to face and uh, just looking for some guidance yeah. it's going to drown us thanks yeah um, I just want to point out about that um, what Mary Louise was referring to in the Dominican Republic because I thought it was quite interesting, um, and I made a point of trying to find out exactly where that trash came from. Mm. And that trash came from uh, because of the way it, you, it looked just like what used to look like in Hampton Beach before we had the carts. Every All the trash there was in plastic bags, right. probably rats 
yep. or cats yep. or dogs or birds mm -hmm. were getting into those plastic bags, just like what used to happen here. Mm -hmm. And all of that trash blew yeah. into the water. So I think that we hit a home run when we went started to go with the idea of the carts. Uh, I think that from a person that lives at the beach, it has never been, it's so much cleaner there. Uh, and it's not just the beach, it's everywhere. Uh, that there, the uh, trash has been contained in those, um, those uh, barrels or containers. Um, but as far as when they weigh more than 75 pounds, I would not pick them up. Right. You know, I'm 100% right. that you shouldn't pick those up. Okay. If, I can't imagine who's, uh, cra uh, I, from what you're saying, they're crushing the, um, the uh, beer bottles or something like that. Glass well, how, yep. where to, but that noise, the, the noise must be unbelievable. So they shouldn't be doing that to begin with. Right. And that's a big problem that everyone has. So that type of thing, whoever's doing that, I wouldn't even pick those up either. Um, as far as new cards, we already have a policy, am I not right, Mr. Uh, Welch? Right, sir. That the only new cards that we are going to be picking up are from new single family homes. We do not pick up carts from condominiums to begin with, uh, unless they're to. under five. Right. So whoever just mentioned about the new businesses, uh, we're not picking those up to begin with. Uh, those there's uh, 40 u units or something, so we won't be picking up those. Um, and as far as I'm also in favor of almost all of, uh, I'd have to really get to know it a little bit better of your seven points. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you should raise the rates. And uh, I would only do it with. Yeah, I would ask. ask. Well, I come it, back here for. for if they need that. to be raised, they need to be raised. Mm -hmm. I think what the people of Hampton want is that they're tr that they get these services. If they have to pay more, they have to pay more, and that goes for their taxes. Uh, I think the people of Hampton have voted for this recycling. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, if it's going to be so much more expensive, I think we have to look at: uh, Do we still want to do it? Um, and put it on as a Warren article. If it's going to be that much more, then we need to make sure the people know how much it is. Mm -hmm. But people have voted to do it, so yes. evidently, if they have to pay more, they have to pay more. Yes. So I don't see this to be a big problem about the money. Yes. Um, it either needs to be we do it or we don't do it. Whatever it costs, we should be uh, making sure that people pay it, whether they pay it in these new type of rates or whether they pay it in their taxes. People want their trash picked up. We don't want it to look like the Dominican Republic. <laughs> I would agree. Um, and uh, the condominiums, we've already dealt with that. Uh, I, for one, unless you're just putting those new barrels, and I saw all the ones, that, the letters that are in the things today, that people ask for new ones, let them go buy them. They're, you know, they have to buy them. And I would like to know, every time one of these places, or restaurants, or buildings are going out of business, what happens to their cards? Where do they go? Do you pick them up? When the, uh, when the um, uh, sea spiral, oh, not sea spiral, the other one, uh, Kenfield now is, good. do they have carts there at the Kenfield? I believe they were issued to, I know so they were issued So are you going to pick them up now that they're not going to be there when this new condominium is built? I think that we have to have a policy of how we pick those up. There's another condominium um, that's going to be coming up before the board this month also mm -hmm. that I know has a lot of uh, carts. Where do those carts go? Mm -hmm. So we if, these building, if, them up. if these uh, uh, properties are going out of business and then re-emerging as condominiums, something should be happening yes, that yes. there's a policy of picking these carts up and then using them for whatever, wherever we have to well, use them. Well, we clean them and we reissue Yeah, the one, the one issue with that, just I put it out here, is information only. Yeah. Uh, first, prior to the policies uh, of no new cards except if it's new residential and prior to the condominium five, when a business did request a additional cart, recycling or trash, and it was above and beyond what was given to them, the one set free, and they paid for it, there was the impression because they paid for the cart, it was theirs. Because the way the mm. ordinance wrote, yeah. was written in 
uh, and everything came in is that we would be charging residents what we are charged for the carts. We don't make any money on them or anything like that. So that's the one concern about when somebody goes out that I think we just need to maybe think about more when we're writing the policy. Well, we I did track them. Very few of them are paying for them. Some of them are, and we have actually tracked those that were paid barrels versus those that were given to the property. Um, consistency here and there over the years, you know, that's different. But I, I throw it out there as information. Yeah. Just that some people have paid for the barrels. If they, they pay for them, let them show you that they paid for them and let them keep them. But I mean, don't pick know, it up. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Other than that, they need to keep the I barrels. I prefer we take them. them back so they don't wind up on someone else's yes. property and give them some sort of well, yeah. credit. Well, you can't they paid for them. But could we, do you, you know, them? looking at the policy, could we refund some portion of the used? Um, I, I, I threw it out there as something to think I'd about. Say, I would say that was the best way to do yeah, it. Yeah, and then we yeah, have the carts that. that we can Let just them use refund that. some of the yeah. money for the carts that were paid for. Yes. My fear is letting them keep it. We did have, believe it or not, um, PD actually got involved. They saw someone selling the Hampton barrels on Craigslist. Oh it was God. somebody who paid for them, so it was his, moving out of town. It's like, I'm not going to need it anymore. Maybe someone else wants it and they don't want to pay for the barrel. I mean, welcome to it the like internet. That you <laughs> yeah. But it happened. And, yeah. uh, as far as I'm concerned, but I mean, I'm not the one that making up this. You know, we have to yeah. discuss this. Uh, I would say we're not handing them out anymore. Correct. Uh, Correct. Let the people buy them. I mean, mm. it, you know, I, we're, are we selling them? I, I, yeah. Let's get out of this. We're selling business. replacement carts. We're mm -hmm. selling like we had someone who built a house. They got destroyed in the process of. So are you ordering new carts? This year I am not no. ordering okay. new carts. Well, I, got I think I'm willing to make a motion that we should not order any more carts. If people want to buy carts that are compatible with the trucks, let them buy them. And you'll be able to see them when the, what color they are, if they're theirs or not. My only concern is that if we don't buy a cart equal in strength, right, yeah. in soft condition to the ones that we that we got uh, requirements there. We're either going to be in the cart business or we're not. Right. If you don't want to be in the cart business, you need to get out of it. I want to be in the cart business, but it's not free. The, the days of free carts ended yes. about a month ago. So you yeah. still want to be able to sell them? If you can, right. I have to if I you have need. control the, the metal. Yes. Like you said, it's been very successful when we yeah. went to carts. I well, agree. If you're going to be selling the carts, then I think you should make a profit selling them, just like other stores do. So if you need to have me make a motion uh, telling you that, yeah, whatever the carts cost, that we should mark them up 25 or 50 percent and sell them and make a profit, we're not going to be doing it for free. Right. So that's what I'm, I think that you need to do. I think you need to start. We'll come back to you with a, right. yeah. with a suggestion. And come back with a suggestion. Again, the voters have voted that they want this done. So if you want to take another vote and see if they don't want it, but I think whether it's you're selling the cards, you should be making a profit. <coughs> you shouldn't be doing this for free. Uh, as far as the glass is concerned, now we're not going to be, they aren't going to be picking up glass. Maybe we just need to eliminate glass from the whole stream and then put it in the trash. Uh, glass is oh, when they like. What? Glass is when they like, correct? Who likes? The recyclers. No. They, no one wants They don't want glass anymore. No, but we want us going to take it anymore. But we want to stockpile it. Yeah. That, we can. Having been to two or three recycling centers, yeah. it's very difficult for them to handle crushed glass. Crushed yeah. whole glass bottle they can pick out, they can pick out one that's broken in two. Yeah. That's not an issue. Right. Uh, the issue with crushed glass is when you push it all into a container, uh, it embeds itself in other yeah. boxes. Yeah. Cardboard. But what is paper. China not buying anymore? Glass? They've cut back on cardboard, they've cut back on Recycled paper, clean paper. They've mm -hmm. cut back on plastics one and two. Yeah. Um, the glass, I'm not really sure if they ever bought it. Mm -hmm. But th on the things that they could reuse, um, you know, recycled, make newsprint or out of recycled paper, those are the things that the market has really tightened up on. Yeah. So when this meeting started and all the discussions I had with Mr. Welch, I was under the impression that we don't want glass anymore. Now, either we want it or we don't want it. I, I don't want it to be clear. I, I think 
I've got another memo that I didn't bring out tonight, I didn't release. Um, I'm recommending that we no longer take crushed glass. Well, what crushed about glass. glass? I think that we should, part of the recommendation was that um, we almost adopt a town ordinance that we don't want glass. Glass at all. Metal, I mean, beer bottles, right? Correct. Okay, Aluminum, so that's what the case is going to be. That's it needs the case to be. And I think that you need to come here with a plan telling us whether you want beer bottles or you don't want beer bottles. Mm -hmm. Or Coke bottles or mayonnaise jars. But, you know, it should be one way or the other. You right. can't expect the people I would agree. to, no wonder no one knows what to put. Right. I've exactly. seen those, um, uh, what about uh, uh, plastic bags that, you know, people put them, uh, trash liners that you put in your garbage can and that they gather at the top. Yep. Uh, you put everyone uses them. Yep. Those apparently are fine. They're fine. Yeah. But like what isn't fine are those little uh, uh, grocery bags. store bags, the um, ones you're the getting from the supermarket yeah. or the whatever. Yeah, because so, yeah. yeah, I see a lot of people putting those in. So it's very right. unclear what... Uh, it, right. No, I agree. That's and that why, is really part of the education That's why component. education was a big part. Right. But yeah. I think that we really need to make a decision. Do we want glass or do we not want glass? And then it can be very clear in everybody's mind what yeah. to do. have a major problem. Oh yeah. It's international. I mean, we'll never tell. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck dealing with uh, waste management. Oh. Right? Good luck. I dealt with them on a commercial property in Massachusetts mm -hmm. and fought and fought and fought and then all of a sudden they decided they didn't want services anymore and they just walked away. Mm -hmm. It was uh, it was a tough one. They're not easy. The other thing I wanted to say is don't use the glass for roads. In Western Mass, where I used to live, they did a whole bicycle path like that. Every time it rained, everybody got flat tires. So I don't know if they didn't do it right or what, That's but it, wasn't, it didn't that. work out well. Yeah. The other thing, the only other thing I want to say is you've got a good start here. We really got to work on yeah. it. But the thing is, it's just like energy. The only way we're going to solve this problem is people got to start using less. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. I mean, we just can't. There's no place to get rid of all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So the education should be also to use less. Right. You know, when we go around and we pick up from people. We're encouraging them. Just take, do whatever you got to do, and just dump it in there. And we'll, yeah. we'll take care of it. The thing is, you got to use less. You got to yeah. learn to get a, a and, and change our habits. I guess that's, that's the other part of it. I remember the days of uh, foam peanuts. I call them, and pretty much nobody ships using foam peanuts anymore right. because once they went out to the curb, the wind got them. Yep. Everybody had foam peanuts. <laughs> yep. um, I think this, this, you know, the same thing with, um, we're a seaside community. One of the th people I reached out was to was the Blue Ocean Society. I said, is glass a problem for you on the beach, trying to keep the beach clean? They sent me numbers. In the last five years, they've, they've collected thousands and thousands of glass bottles. But I was really surprised at how many pieces of glass bottles they pick up. Uh -huh. Apparently even though the beach is raked, it doesn't get the glass. And they're, they're picking up uh, pieces and pieces of glass. I also reached out, tried to reach out with phone calls to the Lifeguard Association because they keep track of their first aid incidents uh -huh. reports. I was surprised to see that 1,700 first aid incidences. Now, I'm not making a presumption that they're glass related, but yeah. there's something related. Um, so we may be the, you know, the type of community that because of our beach area, trying to maintain water quality, trying to maintain quality of life in and off the beach, that maybe glass is not the best thing for this community. Well, you know, those are things we got to come up with, and we got to right. come up with good yep. guidelines. Rick is yep. right. we got to come up with, are we going to do it, are we not going to mm -hmm. do it? And we got to come up, and we got to vote on it and bring it to a, to a Warren article and let the people vote on it and say, hey, this is what we want, this is what we don't want. But it's going to, if we're going to keep continue, it's going to cost. Right. There's no two ways about it. It's going to cost. Yeah, and I think that people are going to want to pay, I mean, just imagine outlying wine bottles in this town. I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> Uh, it's gonna, you know, yeah. and see those those make it through the recycling process. Yeah, because they're heavy, a prop. Because they're heavy, right? So, um, 
but yeah, but, uh, I'd be all for having uh, beer cans. And, I mean, are cans a problem? No, they're not. No. I mean, no. matter of fact, so the, is there the beer I drink, I could have buy a an article that all the restaurants or whoever yeah. that we only sold beer cans instead of beer bottles. That, I think there's some research. There's some research that's been done. I, I raised a question in a discussion uh, a number of weeks ago. If uh, the town's in the process of handling out liquor licenses and entertainment establishments, that par could part of the rules of effect, if you will, with those establishments say no glass bottles. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why uh, Spunny knows to have a problem. Beer cans are much easier to store. Yeah. Well, in, in talking with them, it was transportation. He told me that beyond right. 200 miles, much lighter. he lost his shirt in the transportation it. portion because he was paying to ship glass, yep. not beer. Yep. It was better to ship it in cans. Mm. Mr. So. Chairman, after you have a chance to comment, I have one more thing. Go ahead, Alan. Oh. Um, oh, well, maybe two things. Uh, could we get a printed up list or guidance to show on Channel 22? I'm sure they would. Yes. I think that would help tremendously to have a attention, you know, Definitely. and waste and yep. whatever. And the last thing that I uh, wanted to complain about, I was going to do it another night, but this is a good opportunity. State of New Hampshire Waste. We are the only state park in the state of New Hampshire where the town handles the state park waste. I am given to understand that in every other community that has a state park in New Hampshire, the state park pays to get rid of the waste. They, they paid us, I asked Christy Pulliam a couple of days ago, um, the state has paid us $20,000 and change in 2017 for disposing of their waste. They're sending personnel into the public works yard after hours unsupervised to dump the waste. The volume of waste off that beach is terrifying, I think, and you shouldn't have to handle that. So I would like to see us, or as a board, or however we work it out, notify the state of New Hampshire that we will no longer handle, public works will no longer handle their waste. That should cut down fairly significantly on your waste stream, I would think. And uh, enough, enough is enough. You, you, you go, I'm left. No, I, I think your points here are, are yep. we need to, to address all of them. I think we have, uh, we do have an issue in this town where, um, you know, people like to recycle sure. and people have asked for it and they've asked for it. And so um, we, I, I think we got to continue to do that. Mm -hmm. However, if it starts costing us so much that we, it's cheaper to just to put it out for trash and we're going to, we're going to save. $150 at minimum, you know, a ton mm -hmm. by putting it in the trash, then I think we need to look at that, take a hard look at that and see if we do that. Let so. the people decide. Yeah. Hey, yeah, we can let the people decide, but we can't do that between now and next year. And I, I, said, I don't want to short term. I, short I need term, to, we can you yeah. know, we can so allow you to the do the flexibility it. to yeah. make the decisions. Correct. I need to make on a daily basis. Yeah. Correct. And report back to you what those are. Yes, yeah, so I'll make a motion that we should allow that. Well, that, that's this that's would be this whole. And then we need to come up with a plan and let the people vote whether they realize their taxes are going to go up if they want to have recycling or not. So I make a, a motion that in the short term we give him the leeway to do this. To do this. This all the, this whole memo. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. stipulated in his memo. I'll, yes. I'll second that for the whole. Yeah. It's for the whole memo. Yeah. Yes. I'll second that with with the stipulation that they come back with a plan. Yeah. 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 A good what laid out plan of what we're accepting, what we're not accepting, how we're yeah. presenting and it. Is now. it with the state in here also? It is not in the Yeah, there's nothing in there uh, okay. because to do so would have been um, we have standing agreements, understandings. Um, it would have changed. That isn't something I think in the middle of the summer yeah, that you right. close the door or pull the rug out. Right. Right. No. However, long we, range. Can charge, long range. we can charge them if, if we're going to send it to
trash instead of recycling, then we charge them. Right now, they, so, most of their trash is so contaminated. Yes. Recycling is so contaminated, it's all going into trash. Yeah. Okay. We're That's, charging them seven cents a pound for everything. Okay. That's another so point. Does that cover the, the cost of it? It covers our disposal costs. Okay, yes. then that's good. Yeah. So I make that motion about these seven uh, principles. Okay, nice second. Second, all yep. those in favor? Unanimous. Great job, Chris. Oh, thank you. And Jen, very good job. Thank you. I was just most. And I think that you ought to really come back with a firm decision about or the last yep. mistake. Yeah. But you. And thank you for understanding, and thank you for seeing that I, I just came with the seven because it is such. This could have been a 20-page dissertation. I would, yeah. and I didn't think that tonight was the time nor the place to do that. That we need to. Um, there are some short-term things we need to do, and some longer-term things we need to look at. And thank you for. Mm. It goes to the zero to ten. I use this today. We don't want to go from zero to ten right. without taking the steps in the middle. And we need to, we need to do what we have to do to get the first steps off the ground. Go find the answers to the questions that you're asking. What the public's going to ask do the education so that people can recycle mm -hmm. the right way so they know better and then figure out how we go. And I it. think one picture is worth a thousand whatever when you yeah. look at what happened in the Dominican Republic that that stuff blew off the streets into the ocean. Correct. We don't want that here. All over the whole beach was covered. Alrighty, oh, so well. now we're going to B? Sure. Sure. Ooh. Lafayette Road drainage and we're voting a motion. Oh, yeah, we did. I thought we'd, we'd, we'd voted. Oh, okay. Oh. Make it clear. I, I think we voted. All those in favor? Unanimous. Correct. There. Okay. Lafayette Road drainage and roadway improvements. What you have before you is a recommendation to award Wright Pierce the design contract uh, for the drainage improvements on Lafayette Road. This will be the last phase of the project. Uh, as we've discussed many times, this is the drainage compulsion. It will go from uh, High Street down to basically the Rite Aid area. That's where the drainage is in that road. This will also take care of the paving from where the state ended at Park Avenue mm -hmm. all the way up to High Street. This will take a look at the High Street uh, parking lot to do drainage improvements in that area. We have some flooding concerns. We want to look at making some greener solutions, reworking that parking lot to um, have better quality and quantity that's not sheet flowing right off of it. Uh, this will also look at the sidewalks, uh, the curbing that is there. And Wright Pierce uh, is intimately aware with Lafayette Road. Uh, we do have an on-call uh, engineering contract with them for an RQ we did three years ago. So that, uh, their, oof, English, their design fee uh, for this project is $59,000, and that's what I'm asking for the board to approve tonight. They would get started. Uh, and according to their schedule that's in their proposal, which will just move out a month, uh, we'd have construction documents ready to bid by late winter. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, uh, motion. Motion. I'll second it. I, I just want to comment here a little bit. This, we're not saying any ornamental lighting, right? Jesus. No, that's why I didn't thank you. Use it. Um, people have been a little excited about that about Lafayette Road being shut off um, for a time. you have an estimate or will you be getting an estimate of the time to complete the project? So this design, when we know the total scope of the project, we go through the value engineering process and everything we can get for what the people have already voted, uh, the $1.5 million for, that will come with a schedule. Uh, the person who bids will have a set schedule. So, so we we'll want to make sure that trenches have you know settled we plan on completely reclaiming Lafayette Road yeah. we will need to talk about work hours and things like that but it's just too premature right now right but you but the public will have a pretty clear understanding by the time you've been through the bid process mm -hmm. that it will take eight weeks or 12 weeks or whatever the thing is exactly to, add, to complete the project are you going to be stipulating the new the plastic pipe or the the new type of pipe for the drain line like all the pipe will be plastic. All the pipe will be plastic on this one. High yeah. density polyester. So we don't have PVC. to worry about 
right. having the thing corrode and fall in and all that. No, so normally in town we require an SDR, which is even a stronger pipe, and we do that because of trees and roots. Yeah. This is not an area that's trees and roots. Right. So we use the standard industry, what is used today, HDP. Right. Pipe. Because it will be a great relief to everybody when we say we, we're going to be able to finish that area Correct. of town and get everything nicely done in the road. And we have sewer and we have drainage and we'll be in wonderful shape. And the water was done and the gas is done. There should be no reason to go back in the road. Yeah, excellent. Staying. Anybody else? All of Oh. Well, I just want to ask, well, I was going to ask that same question. So completion, the actual construction phase is going to be? It'll be the, spring. We'll spring start of first 19. off in the spring of 19. And our goal, because we are completely reclaiming, is to be done in 19. What we will be figuring out, and again, it is a little premature, we don't like to pave the roads the minute we dig trenches. In right. Uh, we risk settlement. I don't want to have to come back. It is possible that we would pave base like we did this time like we did, yeah. and then well what I did this time I mean what you're seeing out there that was an overlay that's what they right, call an okay, overlay yeah. that was to try to take some of the bumps out and a promise to even out those trenches yeah. it would look like that but it would sit a little bit lower okay. uh, and then we would come back spring 2020 and it would just be a paving project yeah. no excavation no um, so would digging. we be like in the road though in the fall in 19 too or not it's all going to depend, depend on this construction schedule. I believe that we can get the drainage done in the spring. I don't want to be working in the summer. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, that type of thing. Yeah. When you start talking sidewalks, you have to be really careful in phasing and yeah. make sure that we have another sidewalk open yeah. uh, for people to use. So yeah. we're just not ready to answer how long that's going to be. Right. And mainly for the patients, too. You know, there's going to be those that want to just get it done go straight and for as much as you want and there's going to be others can we please have a break somewhere in between it yeah so i mean those are things that i think we should work out and we've done neighborhood meetings for yeah. the other two and yeah. we encourage people to show up the clear information from the public is going to be mm -hmm. critical just yeah okay great thank you good all those in favor unanimous i, I got like to ask uh, okay. a question um this just happened to me today uh Someone started, uh, and I've had this happen a couple of times this week, about how bad the potholes are, mm -hmm. and this and that. I would like to, and, there's, and, there, and each time they ask, they're at, acting like we don't spend any money on the roads here in Hampton. Now, how much, I would just like a ballpark figure, so just throw it off the top of your head. How much do we spend on the roads a year? In that them? section, easily fifty thousand. I mean, yeah, but I mean, on all, I mean, we're oh. doing this road um, uh, on Route One. Two years ago, it was six hundred thousand for paving. This year, it's uh, three seventy-five. It was three, no, three hundred thousand this year for the Warren article. So, so six hundred. Here's a good example. Last year, we did all of um, Woodland Road. We did Hard Arts Way. We did Drake Side Road, including the abutment removal, and a few little small things. Water Tower Road. That was six hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars plus what the state had given to us as the extra money. Mm -hmm. So it was almost yeah. 700 and change. This year? The, that was what we accomplished last year for those dollars. Okay. This year, the Warren article is only for $300,000. We used a portion of it to clean up Lafayette Road so that I held tight to my promise on that you'd have a smoother surface yeah. instead of all the trenches. And Ann's Lane just went out to bid last Good. week. Good. So Ann's Lane is a sewer and drain project with a full reclaim from Lafayette Road to Mill Road. So that will take the 300000 On top of that, in our budget, we have $120,000, uh, what we consider highway maintenance, yeah. but that is all of highway maintenance. So that could be fixing a pothole to buying new sign. I mean, all the different pieces, and I don't have that exactly, mm -hmm. but it falls into that category, so I don't want to be misquoted. But that's what gets used. So you know? we spend as much or more than most towns in this area. Now, they were saying, oh, but Hampton's got the worst roads. We do. We, we do have we worse do. roads. We have bad roads, but are they any worse than uh, 
I suggest towns. anybody tries uh, Tamesbury right. off of yeah. Route 150. Or you Kensington. think our roads are awesome? We're not. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're not downtown in Rochester for the yeah, last three weeks. Terrible. And there, there, there were many years we didn't spend much on our roads. Right. right. And, and we're that's also playing catch up. Catch up. Yeah, that's, that's right. And so we are spending the money. We are. Yes. What you everybody needs to remember, and I think Chris has said it a million times, and you've heard me say it, to fix a road when the stuff underneath it is junk. Yeah. Right. is a waste of our taxpayers' money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why we're going with the approach of Anne's Lane, and Anne's Lane took this long to get done. Yes, it was on, I think, 2016 or 17's yeah. warrant, yeah. is because we needed the funds to replace sewer and drainage. Right. Well, this year, let's see, Force Main 160. 2016, the year I was supposed to do Anne's Lane, I lost $140,000 of my sewer budget. Yeah. So we are truly trying to do it the right way, versus sort of what we've been patching, yeah, patching, patching. Yeah. tying together. Yeah. So it's a slower process, yeah. but it's a better process. And but can you comment on that, um, what's happening with that $100,000 warrant article for Green and Junction Road? Sure can. So this Wednesday, we received eight uh, submittals for what we put out as a request for qualifications. Mm. The request for qualifications was in the area of uh, stormwater and hydraulics and flooding, uh, transportation and roadway mm. design, mm -hmm. coastal engineering projects that relate to erosion, uh, walls, again, more of that hydraulic stuff, uh, and then everything that you could possibly imagine with our sewer collection and wastewater treatment system. Much like I've used here before the board, Wright Pierce was previously qualified in an RFQ and Ty and Bond has been doing work under an agreement with the town for tasks. We took an approach to qualify different firms in these different areas so that not one firm is overburdened by all our work, but also to make sure that the town is getting the best firm yeah. for the area of expertise. So on Wednesday, uh, we are we have narrowed for those that submitted, so not all eight that responded submitted for the hydraulics, flooding, stormwater component. Yeah. Of those that did, Chris and I narrowed it down uh, to who we believe are the two top firms for that area and we'll be doing the interview. Uh, both the, I call them the leaders in charge of Green and Junction, as well as what I call the West of Ashworth Street, West of Ashworth Streets, so Deb and Tom were invited to sit in on those interviews. Um, they aren't able to make it, but said that they would forward questions uh, if they Good. needed to. Good. From there, we will come to this board with our recommendation of who we should go into contract with, and we will take the preliminary design for King's Highway money. Mm -hmm. That was the 80000 I believe. Mm -hmm. And then the money for the actual study and distribute that work to come up with the scope for these people to get us what we've asked for. So do you have any type of timeline in your... Um... I'm hoping by the end of year we have reports to report out. So that would be selection, design, details, study, two different things. And I hope you can comment on that next because a lot of people have been asking about the different things that have been in the Yeah, we have not forgotten about it. It's just <laughs> we're doing one thing at a time and just... Yeah, yeah. because this is, uh, this got brought up several times. Eight RFQs, it's like, you know, 50 two. pages a piece. <laughs> so when everybody decides they want to do it. Wednesday and Thursday, we have five interviews yes. over those yeah. two days. So wow. uh, we're interviewing five of the eight firms. Um, and you know, we didn't have a sewer break, we weren't putting in a bypass force main. Yeah, probably we would have been doing these interviews a month. three weeks early, a month earlier. But there's a limit to each day. Same with Ann's Lane. Ann's Lane has its pre bid meeting uh, yeah. this week as well. So we're trying to, now that we've got a second to not do sewer, we're trying to do everything else. Yeah. Right. Jen, now, have we got religion, say, on the Anne's Lane project? Are we going to be using the plastic pipes for sewers and drains from now on? Yes. From now on, yes. That's what they, we've been they told. They've told the us a number of times. Bless you. Wrote, um, I just want to... Regina? Yeah. First of all, I just want to talk real quick about the ice pond dam just because I've gotten correspondence from people that live on Muncie Drive saying mm -hmm. that it looks like way different than I guess it did before they were doing work down there or something. I'm going to let Chris address this one. Cause Can I read you the letter that I drafted to go out to uh, hopefully... Yes, yes, okay. that would be perfect. Um, <laughs> after realizing that a number of people um, 
there's a whole mess of different information out there. We drafted this letter. It'll hopefully go out tomorrow okay. to anybody who abuts and including across the street. Uh, you are listed as an abutter ice pond dam located adjacent to the Woodland Road. For this reason, we are sending you this letter to address a number of questions raised about the status of the pond. The pond level is down due in part to the moderate drought we are experiencing and because some water passing through and around the dam that was installed last fall. The Public Works Department has decided to reinstall the overflow pipe to a lower level so that it is below the surface and less susceptible to future damage. The work has been planned for mid-August when the flow and the water levels would be at their lowest. We have noticed that there is a minor seat between some of the stones placed last fall. The PWD did a flow test and has identified the actual location. We actually poured dye into the pond oh, wow. and watched where it came out the other side. We will be installing clay we have in our yard for sealing the seat. The work has also been planned for mid-August when the flow and the water levels will be at their lowest. Um, lastly, the PWB will be installing stop blocks in the current dam spillway to keep the future water elevation to a height that existed in prior years. The work is planned for September of Oct or October after the, the seat and the overflow pipe are done. So I think a lot of people thought that um, we weren't going to do anything or we intentionally wanted it down. It just makes doing the work a lot easier. But I mean, we didn't, uh, we did, one thing we didn't plan on was the, the moderate drought. So the water levels are down. I mean, we're experiencing the same thing. Metal oh, pond metal. is uh, yeah, drier pond. than it's ever been. Yeah. Uh, people tell me um, has an odor to it that, uh, but they also tell me that they've noticed that in past years yeah. that when it gets really dry, things dry out and things start to rot. decompose. Yeah, so um, that will hopefully go out to all the abutters because I had spoken about three or four different people and I was led in the impression that I thought they were going to talk to everybody else but kind of find out. It, it really isn't going that well, so that letter's been put together to go out Good. tomorrow. Perfect. Yep. And I just want to add one thing. Obviously, we just brought up like two or three additional items that weren't even on the agenda that yeah. you guys are in the middle of dealing with, <laughs> plus the temporary force main, plus the wastewater treatment mm -hmm. plans with Wright Pierce. So, so we meet with Wright Pierce tomorrow to do our phase two <laughs> um, planning session that moves on to the next treatment processes. and. Uh, the temporary force pane is valve is open and going. Uh, we are using our main pipe as our main pipe, but it is open for when those flows, just like we said, when we need the second right. pipe, it is there, it is whole, it is working. And I didn't even, you know, I wasn't even asking for that, and you already was ready to give it to me. So I think that just is showing that you, the two of you, got everything under control, and there's a lot of things going on that have happened sort of all at one time, and maybe we just need to let public works get it done they'll get it done very good well I had, i've had a question i've been waiting for a while but everybody else seemed to have more you got us all excited um on our work on route one yes we have a lot of places where the telephone poles are in the middle of the sidewalk correct is there anything we can do to require unitil to move their poles out of our sidewalk as we're doing this project that's something we're certainly going to look into there's a difference between in the sidewalk on the edge or right uh -huh. smack dab in the middle yeah. of where we need a tip down ramp for an ADA because poles can be in sidewalks as long as you have three foot clear and you have 250 feet on either side, but you can't have it where you need to get off the curb. Well, and that is too, if the poles are behind the sidewalk, yeah. they're less apt to get hit. Yeah. They're less apt to have damage. Uh, I think it would, it would do much better. And when we put up our non-ornamental lighting <laughs> that'll be in that way uh you know well, that'll be, you know that this is part of the that pole process. location will be part of the design and then you know and i think we should encourage uh unitil that they need to move their poles back yeah there's a number of them there some of them right on corners of driveways mm -hmm. some are mm -hmm. are you know they're, they're where people can get hurt we yeah. need to look at the pole license. And yeah, we'll look at the pole license. I, I found them always to be when they can be moved to a more protective location. They like uh, they're they're happy too. There are some places down there you're not going to be able right. to do that. If we don't yeah. strike them with a plow or you know there are some places you get down in front of the the uh, uh, the block where the uh, 
uh, the old odd fellows block. Mm -hmm. That's hard to put those poles. Right. You can't put them on the back of the sidewalk because it's, it's against building. the building. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. But you get down closer to where the 401 is and those, the uh, real estate, I mean the uh, attorney's offices on the other side, those poles are right out at the edge of the road. Why not move them back a little bit and, yeah. and make them safer for everybody? We can ask. So. Yeah. All right. All right. So Thank you. Is that smell that's coming out of the mill uh, pond there, or is that rotting material, or is it waste? No, it's rotting material. We, we, the number of people have asked, is it sewer? Uh, we've checked the pump stations. We've checked the pipes. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've pulled the manholes. We've climbed into the easement. Yeah. On it's the back end of mill pond. Material. It's rotting material. Yeah. Um, we have our own employees that live on Birch Road and yeah. in right in that mm -hmm. neighborhood. They say it's bad, yeah. They're talking to their neighbors and they say, you know, if you if you bought within the last five years, you probably never experienced it. But we've yeah. been here ten or twenty yeah. years, and yeah, every so many years, yeah. this is what happens. Stay on the wind, 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 wind is blowing. Right. Yeah. 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 Alrighty. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Trish, you made a big hit in that neighborhood. <laughs> the neighborhood that oh, you the, picked up, yes. Yeah, picked up one. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Good I night. Agree. A positive hit. <laughs> town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the uh, delivery session for the special town meeting will be held August 6, 2018 at 7 p.m. will be held in the selections meeting room, this room, in the town offices at 100 Willingham Road. Workshop number three on the building of flood control uh, smarts. Uh, Coastways um, to protect your property from coastal flooding will be held August 21 from 6 to 8 p.m. in the St. James Masonic Lodge, 77 Tide Mill Road. Special town meeting will be held August 24th at the Marston School from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Please come and vote. The Department of Public Works is currently bidding the requirement of the replacement of sewer lines on Ann's Lane to begin this fall to be completed in the spring of 2019. And with the board's permission, uh, the State Department of uh, Environmental Services Wastewater Engineering Bureau issued today the uh, approval for the grants to the town of Hampton for uh, replacement of sewer lines from the Church Street station to the, the plant. And uh, the amount of money they authorize is $58,982 more than what we have in the warrant. With the board's permission, I would uh, ask that the warrant be amended to read four million nine nine six eight five zero, which is the same price that the state is willing to pay out for work on the on a particular project. I'll so a motion. Yeah, you need to I need a motion to do that so we can present I'll the amendment. I'll second. Yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. That's it, sir. That was hard. Any right? questions for the town manager on his report? <laughs> yeah, I would. Um, what day, what day is the uh, election going to be again? It's Friday. Friday, uh, Friday. Uh, Friday August 24th. The Marston School is 7 to 8. 7 a.m. to 8. 7 a.m. Yeah, right. to 8 p.m. Yep. Mr. The deliberative session is next Monday. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Could I just get the number on the bond? 4,996,000. 4,996,850. Okay, and I have a one question too. I saw something, I wasn't at our last meeting, but we had received another letter from, uh, or something that Senator Shaheen had sent out about getting the harbor dredged. Yes. Didn't, didn't she do another follow-up email she did, to the Army and, Corps? And I've, I've since talked to, um, I've since talked to both senators actually, and um, they are trying to get an appropriation from Congress do two things. One, the Army Corps of Engineers has not had an appropriation for this current fiscal year, uh, so they have no money, period. Right. Uh, except what's in their reserve accounts. So, unless they get an appropriation for this year before the end of October, there's no money they can spend at all in this year. Good and the, the next year's budget is, is pending as well. Um, it's, it's really a strange situation. We did meet with the Army Corps last week. We met with uh, the town of Seabrook this afternoon, and uh, the two towns have agreed to work together from an administrative standpoint to try to convince the folks in charge 
that they should be working quickly to get these monies appropriated and, and get the work started. What they told us was, it's getting late in the game, and they're talking about not 2019, but 2020 to do any work. Well, because I'm told by a lot of businesses that... They won't be there in 2020. Yeah, well, they won't be selling fish, that's for sure, because well, right now the fishermen have to dredge their fish out of the harbor because yeah. no one else is doing it. Uh, yeah, so, in fact, the Army Corps mentioned the other day... That's why the price of fish is... Yeah, and we, we did object to this, that the Army Corps suggested that if the fishing co-op wanted to clean the harbor themselves and pay for it themselves, <laughs> they could. Uh, they also oh suggested God. that perhaps the towns could do that, but uh, that's not the objective. It was made very clear oh. by, I, see, I think, Senator Shaheen's um, yeah. representative to the meeting that those companies will be out of business by the time the Army Corps does something. Yeah, that's what it sounds like to yeah. me. So we're pushing very hard to get that done. Thank you. Anything else for the town manager under his report? Seeing none, old business. Jim? No. Rick? Regina? Um, yeah, I just wanted to hear from uh, town council as far as an update on the uh, complaint against the state. Good. Good evening. <laughs> the town's five count suit against the state of New Hampshire was brought on February 14th of this year. And since that time, uh, we have sent a standard uh, set of questions to be answered under oath called interrogatories and requests for productions of documents to the state of New Hampshire. The state, uh, after that time, without answering any of those, filed a motion to dismiss based on various grounds that include uh, sovereign immunity, uh, alleged failure to study, state a claim upon which relief can be granted and other grounds. Uh, we have, uh, for various reasons, uh, sought uh, extensions of time on answering that very uh, broad-ranging motion to dismiss, and our current deadline is September 10th to do that. Uh, in the meantime, I have filed uh, with the court because the state, contrary to its representations to me, that they would entertain some limited discovery requests to assist us in answering the motion to dismiss. Uh, we have filed a motion to compel those answers. And I have uh, just last week received a uh, order from the court uh, which denies our motion without prejudice, meaning it can, it can be taken up again. But the court indicates that in responding to the state's motion to dismiss, if we argue that further discovery may result in an amended complaint, then one avenue we have to follow is to uh, dismiss the complaint without prejudice and seek the discovery we want by other means, such as the right to no law. About a month after the suit by the town was filed, the New Hampshire Supreme Court came out with a fairly broad-ranging uh, opinion that uh, laid out some uh, new ground rules on the issue of sovereign immunity. And I believe that the discovery that we are seeking can help us to file an amended complaint uh, that would withstand such a challenge. If we take the judge up off on his suggestion of a dismissal without prejudice, uh, we would be able within a year to file another complaint, uh, which would be amended uh, with the benefit of the answers to the right to no law requests that could help us uh, to meet this challenge. So uh, my recommendation to the board is that yes, we do. Uh, take the judge up on the on the avenue that is offered and uh, I would recommend that the board uh, move to authorize the town attorney to file with the court a voluntary non-suit without prejudice as recommended by the Superior Court judge in his order dated July 18 2018 to enable the town to obtain official records through the right to no law and other requests in order to file an amended complaint against the state as needed within a year. 
Yeah. What happens if we don't? What happens if we don't do this? If we simply um, try to amend the complaint with the information we have now, which could be enhanced greatly. Uh, if we amended the complaint now, uh, we may not get it in as, as sufficient a form as we would like. If the order, if the, if we file this answer, the objection to the motion to dismiss, and it were granted, mm -hmm. then we would not have the ability to file this amended, this yeah. voluntary non-suit without prejudice. Yeah. We would lose that opportunity. Rick, you had a question. I'll second. Do we need a motion. Yes. I'll make the motion. Second. Motion by Rick. So we we form the motion. So that yes, the motion would be to move to authorize the town attorney to file with the court a voluntary non-suit without prejudice uh, to enable the town to re to obtain official records through the right to know law and other requests in order to file an amended complaint against the state as needed within a year. That's the motion. We have a motion and second. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. I do. I have questions. Yep. And this is recommended by a superior court judge, correct? He, uh, he he put it out to us that if we wish to uh, obtain further discovery to file an amended complaint, that that's something we could do. Good. Okay. And but the motion we just made was to voluntary non-suit without prejudice. Without prejudice. Yes. Okay. And I just wanted to say that I we're going to vote on this in a minute. But before the board votes. I just want to say that I am not backing down on this case, mm -hmm. and I want to read something that Max Sullivan actually wrote on May 31st, 2018. Uh, a judge upheld a jury's verdict awarding, awarding $9 million to a crash victim and her husband who sued the state, driver, and construction company for responsibility of the accident. Judge David Anderson denied motions by the state for the verdict to be set aside in Rockingham Superior Court allowing Weinhold to keep $8.5 million granted by a jury in her January civil suit. So as we know, the bringing action against the state was going to be a process, and you know we are figuring out how to do it. It is definitely what I still believe needs to be done, and whatever town council advises us to do, I agree with. So I just wanted to make that statement. Thank you. We have a motion and second. Yeah. All those in favor? Yeah. Thank you. I like the sovereign immunity. I thought King George was dead. King Charles. King Charles. Whichever one of them. Anything else in the old business? Thank you, Mark. Thank you. New business. Fire Department Software 2018 Warrant Article 18 Purchasing Policy and Policy Procedures Waivers. Waiving the policy waiver and the control supervision and enforcement. Mr. Town Manager. Good evening. Oh. <coughs> wow. I snuck up on you. You did. <laughs> uh, I'm here on behalf of the Fire Department to ask the board to grant a waiver um, of the purchasing policy. This is to institute a portion of um, that software package that was part of Warrant, Warrant Article 18 from this past year, this year's town meeting. Um, one of the upgrades we're looking to do is their, as you recall, is their primary software um, package. Um, and the fire department went out and went on a robust evaluation of a number of different vendors for this, actually in advance of the preparation of the Warren article and afterwards, and um, selected a particular vendor. Uh, Red NMX is the name of the vendor. As you imagine, there are a number of vendors that can supply this, but finding the right product that fits what our guys need, what they wanted. It was a good uh, evaluation team, a very good group of internal folks, IT folks, went through each of these vendors that came, put on presentations, they got to test and evaluate it, and selected Red NMX as the proper one. So why we're here tonight is to ask for the board to vote to allow us to contract with Red NMX. This is about a $75,000 uh, purchase that we'll be making. We've done some negotiations. Initially, that number was up around 82, 83,000. We've negotiated their quote down lower to this about 75. There's one piece that's that'll fluctuate, and that is the data migration of our old data into the new system. Um, so I would ask the board to uh, waive uh, the competitive bidding process. That's the first one, that 718-5.1, uh, I believe, or that's nine. And then the other one is uh, to vote that this is in the best interest of the town in doing so. Be happy to answer any of your questions. Any questions in the board? So the reason that we're doing this is they interviewed the different, this is the one that fits their specific needs? Correct. 
the, 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 all of these, you know, we currently have IMC, they have IMC, they evaluated their new modules, what they have, and other you know, well-known across the country places. They did their evaluations on other folks that have experience, they've done their T&Es, um, and this is the one that fits the needs of Hampton best. That's why we're mm -hmm. asking for it. Yeah. I'll make that motion. Jim makes a motion. Is there a second? second? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. 10 Brooks Lane, street light removal request. Mr. Chairman, the owner of property, this is the last property on Brooks Lane. Uh, number 10 has requested the street light that's in front of their property be turned off and the pole removed. Um, we don't have an objection to shutting the light off. We've made it very clear to them that they're going to have to pay a thousand dollars to have the pole removed instead mm -hmm. of the town. Yeah. They've agreed to that. Okay. Any questions? Nope. So motion. Second. Mo motion. Second. So they understand that they will remove the pole? That's correct. Yeah, that's yeah. Expense. All in favor? Unanimous. Acceptance of bond, Labrador Lane for 737-47677, Lyons Subdivision. Mr. Chairman, this is the result of a subdivision approval by the planning board. Uh, we are awaiting a check, but we'd like approval to receive it and to deposit it when it arrives. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Vote of numerical tally on the warrant article. Mr. Chairman, um, the motion would be to move in accordance to the provisions of New Hampshire Revised Statutes Annotated Chapter 40, Section 13, Subsection 5-A, that all votes of the board of selectmen of the municipal budget committee relative to budget items on any warrant articles or ballot questions shall be recorded votes, and the numerical tally for such votes shall be printed in the town warrant next to the affected word article or on the ballot next to the affected ballot question. Something we do every time we have a meeting. Yep. And uh, we, we record the numerical vote of the various boards and committees. As soon as you vote this, I'm going to ask you for a numerical vote on a special town meeting warrant. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'll so move the, Moved. To the numerical warrant tally. All those in favor? Unanimous. We need a vote on your numerical tally for the support or not support. So we need a motion from this board to support. I make a motion to support the warrant article. I'll second. second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, we have a request from the Rational Taxpayers at Hampton for a public access TV. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to postpone this and have the representatives come in on a separate night. I think I'd, I'd have questions, uh, something I think that we need to talk out I'd with I'd like them. to hear from the town manager first. What? Oh, yeah. Mr. Chairman, I've given you all a copy of the uh, the request, yeah. which came in some time ago after that, before this meeting. And I've also given you a copy of Article 6, Peg Access Channels, um, on the cable TV franchise. I read through this, and I think each of you should read through it uh, with some clarity because it appears that you cannot use the existing governmental channel or the school channels to, um, in fact, honor the request that there would have to be a, a request made to the uh, by the franchising authority to the cable TV system for a general access channel for the public, uh, which would have to be completely separate from the town. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. That's well, I think that says it says it all, doesn't it? Well, it, it's yeah. We the last time we, we asked the cable company to give us a channel was for the schools, mm -hmm. and um, it took over two years to get the channel. In fact, <laughs> in effect, uh, it's it's a long process. Um, the problem, as I see it, with this. Uh, from what I'm reading here is that this must be completely divorced from the town TV system and, and it's separate, although it would be carried by um, the cable company, but it would not be, for instance, they wouldn't be using this facility here yeah. and have to build their own facility yeah. and have a place to house it other than the town property. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, you know, I'm in favor of a public access, and but they have to, there's a lot they have to do to get yeah. that done. They have to form their own 501 3 
Mm -hmm. So, and then they have to board directors. I mean, there's a lot that has to go yeah. through it before it is, because it's public education and government. We already have education and government. If they right. want the public, that's fine. It's great. It's a great idea. Yeah. But you got to do the homework, and you got to get everything in order before you do it. Yeah, and that's not what we are. So, and that's right. So, on his request here, is he wants to have a TV program in length of one and a half hours on our channel, and so I, I would say that. That, well, you said we can't do that. It appears the contract says we can't do it on this channel. So I make a motion. I'll make a motion that we deny it based on the fact that we can't do it on our channel. A second. Yeah, All those in favor? Yeah. Unanimous. Yeah. Capital improvement plan to the planning board. Mr. Chairman, we, we over a month ago we gave the board a copy yeah. of the proposed yep. capital improvement plan for the town yep. furnished by the various departments at this point once you've had an opportunity to read it um, <laughs> not that you need to make a recommendation on it it's just that you need to forward it to the planning board and we're asking your permission to do that a motion. I'll make that motion. motion second second all those in favor unanimous closing comments i think this was a very productive meeting okay. very very well done Oh, are we doing? We, we, we are going to continue our previous non-public at, at the end of this meeting, so. Okay. Um, I will so move that we go into, resume to the, resume our non-public session that we had earlier this evening. A second. Motion, and then at, we will. At what time? Do we need to? Do we need to come back in afterwards? Eight, yes. 9.08. Nine oh At 9.08, we're going to go into non-public. Right. And we're coming back into public? We're coming back into public afterwards. Okay. Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Channel 22.